Okay, uh, now uh, we want to identify what is the percentage of the voltage drop for the single phase. Okay, this example 6 shows how we want to calculate the percentage of voltage drop for single phase. Okay, so this determine the voltage drop at the service panel for the system below. So the total load is 8 kVA. So this one is the apparent power. Okay, apparent power. And then we have the power factor here, 0 0.85. Okay. So in this system, we have a transformer and also the loads. For the transformer, the system is a step-down transformer from 415 to 240 volt with the apparent power 30 kVA. Okay, and then we have the percentage of resistance is 1.5, 1.8 and the reactance is 1.5%. Okay, and then for the load, we have uh, 8 kVA, the apparent power. We power factor lagging 0 0.85. Okay, this system use a uh, cable 3 stroke 0 AWG aluminium PVC conduit with the length of the cable is 120 feet. So, in order to identify to calculate the percentage voltage drop, there are five steps that you have to um, consider. The first one, the step, uh, the step, the first step is you have to determine all system impedance. So in this system, we have two uh, components, which are the transformer and also the cable or wire. So you have to identify what is the impedance of the transformer and also the cable. So for the transformer, uh, you can use the equation for the resistance and also reactant is 1 over 100 times with uh, the percentage of the resistance or the reactant transformer times with the secondary line voltage squared divided by the apparent power. So for the resistance of the transformer, you get 0 0.03456 ohms. While for the reactance of the transformer, you get 0 0.0288 ohms. Okay. Then you have to calculate uh, the resistance on the and also the reactance for the cable or wire. So you have to use um, the 600 voltage. Okay, cable. So from here you can see it is three. The size of the cable is three so zero. Then you have to identify what is the resistance. So this column alternating a current resistance for aluminium wires, and then you have to choose the below one because we consider the ohms two neutral per thousand feet. Okay, the length, and then so the PVC con. Sorry, this one is the you have to choose the um the pvc conduit which is 0 0.13 then you have to look at this column for the reactant for our wires under the uh, uh, aluminium conduits okay which is um the aluminium uh, pvc aluminium conduits which is 0 0.0442 okay after that you use um the value in this equation so this uh, for this uh, equation you have to use um, the single phase the single phase uh, equation for determine the resistance and the reactant which is two times um, the resistance or reactant over thousand feet times 120 feet so for the resistance, you get 0 0.0312 ohms, while for the reactance, you get 0 0.0101 ohms. Okay, the second step is you have to determine the load supply at the end of each segment or portion of the system. So in this case, the load is uh, 8 kVA, which is the apparent power, with 0 0.85 power factor lagging. Then, uh, next step is you have to identify the load current magnitude and also the phase angle by using for single phase as we know that current equivalent to apparent power divided by voltage. Now you can get uh, the current value is 33.33 with the angle negative 31.79 uh, degree of degree amperes. 
After that, you can identify what is the uh, percentage of the voltage drop along each segment of the circuit, starting from the source, which is the transformer, until the load, uh, which we consider the cable. Okay, the first one is for the transformer. You use the, in order to identify what is the magnitude of the voltage drop, you can use the equivalent of approximation method, which is IB times with the resistance times cos theta minus reactant uh, times sin theta. So the value of the magnitude for the voltage drop for the transformer is 1.48 volts. Then you can uh, identify what is the percentage of the voltage drop, which is 1.48 Divide by the system voltage time 100, you get 0.62%. For the cable or wire, so you calculate uh, here um, the same uh, equation, okay, but the difference is the value of the resistance and the reactant, okay. So uh, you just add all the values, then you can get 1.06 volt for the magnitude voltage drop for the cable and then the percentage of voltage drop is 0.44% and the final step is you have to add all the voltage drop along each segment starting from the source to the load which is the point of interest so the total voltage drop at the panel as we uh, calculated before the transformer is 0.62 okay, 0.62% you have to add with the cable or wire uh, voltage drop percent, which is 0.44%. Then you can get the total percentage of the voltage drop is 1.606% for the single phase system. Okay, for the solution, um, there are five steps, same as single phase. Uh, the first step is we have to determine all the system impedances. So the components that we have to consider is two transformer, transformer TR1 and TR2. And then we have three types of cable, which is the 400 KC mil, 8 AWG and 12 AWG. So all these components have their own impedances, so we have to determine one by one. So the first one is uh, transformer TR1. So by using the equation uh, 1 over 100 times with uh, resistance or reactance times uh, secondary line of voltage squared divided by uh, apparent power, then you can get the resistance and also the reactance of the transformer. So the resistance is 0. Point. Okay, so here can see that the resistance is 0 0.0175 okay uh, remember that we have to use the secondary voltage or the low voltage system and then um, for the reactant is 0 0.0625 ohm and then for the cable 400 kcm so we have to um, we have to evaluate we have to do the analysis starting from the source the static is the transformer, then you go to the cable 400 in KC mil. Okay, so you have to refer this equation, this uh, diagram eh, from transformer, then go to the uh, 400 KC mil, and then you go for the uh, this one uh, 8WG transformer 2 and 12AWG. And then for the cable 400 KC mil, you have to um, refer to the 600 volt table in order to determine what is the value for the resistance as I mentioned as I shown before for the single phase so for this cable for the equation for this cable for three phases different eh? uh, as I uh, explained before so uh, for the uh, equation for the three phase there is no two times okay uh, so the resistance is um, you just add insert the value that you look from the table okay and then you can get 0 0.00105 ohms okay for the reactance uh, you will get 0 0.00147 
O. Okay, next is the cable for the A A D B G. Same as the previous uh, uh, steps solution that you have to refer to the um, 600 volt table to identify what is the value for the resistor also reactant. Okay, I can get the value for the resistor and also the reactant for the cable 8 AWG. Then you repeat for the transformer TR2, the same equation as TR1. Okay, then you can get the results for the uh, value for the resistance and also the reactance for the transformer too. Okay, so make sure this one eh. Uh, so this one also the, the the secondary voltage. Okay, then you have to identify what is the resistance and reactance um, for the cable 12 AWG. Okay, same as before. So this value you have to identify by using the 600 volt table. Okay. Then you will get um, uh, the result is uh, 0 0.024 ohms uh, for the resistance, and then while for the uh, reactant, you get 0 0.000648 ohm. Okay, after you have identified all the system impedances. Then you can calculate uh, for the next step, which is you have to determine the load supply at the end of each segment or portion of the system. So at the end of the uh, the main decision uh, panel is this load. Okay, this is load one, and then the end of the service panel is this load. So this one is load two. Okay. So first is this uh, the load one, okay, 600 kVA with 0 0.9 lagging pole factor. Then the second one is 20 kVA uh, with 0 0.85 lagging power factor. Then you have to identify what is the load current magnitude and the phase angle, okay. Um, Okay, you have to identify all, uh, same like the, uh, same like the uh, impedances that we identified, uh, we identified before. So first is through transformer TR1. So we just use the equation as divided by set three uh, V. Okay, then you can get the current, which is three hundred and forty six point four one. With the angle of negative twenty five point eight four percent degree of ampere, okay. Uh, then you have to identify what is the cable. Actually, you have to calculate lah load current for the uh, cable four hundred kc mil because before this, as I mentioned before, it is two times eh, two times four hundred kc mil. Because of it is in the same uh, region for the transformer, okay. So the current is almost the same, okay. Uh, it is connected in in series again, so it is uh, the same uh, current flow from the transformer to the to the cable. Uh, therefore, uh, we just uh, divide it. Eh? That one is for one only. Okay, so if uh, th this one for the, the whole, okay, the current here is for the whole, uh, uh, whole current that flow from the transformer to the cable, to the cable 400 kc mil. So if one cable, con only, only consider one cable, so you have to divide by two, okay. And then um, for true cable uh, 8 AWG, so you just uh, insert the apparent power divide by set 3 times with 1000 volt okay with 1000 volt so because of know that actually here okay so we have the magnetic panel 
this one we have like that and then go to the service panel so this one is mdp this one is the service panel okay so we have to to segment lah. so this one is tx1 and this one is the tx2 okay so this one is 6.6 .6 kb this one is 1000 good okay and then uh, this one will be 450 volt. Wow. that's why for the transformer we consider the 1000 volt and then for the cable of 8 um, wg AWG is also we consider 1000 uh, volt okay and then when go through the transformer okay we consider the uh, the uh, secondary voltage which, which is 415 volt okay so you just um, insert all the value uh, then you can get the reading for the current for the transformer too okay then after that you just um uh, you just key in in this table so summary of load currents so for transformer tr1 is three hundred and forty six point four one with angle of negative twenty five point eight four okay and uh, ampere and then this one is for the this one is for the cable for four hundred kc mil so per conductor so you divide by this one because of the current that flow from transformer and also cable 400 and kc mil is almost the same so if you want to know one cable what is the current then you can just divide by two so you can get this answer divide only the magnitude of the amperes okay it's not um uh, the degree is not uh, considered to be divided to two okay and then uh, we have the cable with 8 AWG is 11.55 amperes. And then we have the transformer. The transformer for TR2 is 27.82. And then the last part, because of the, the current that flow from the transformer TR2 is same as the cable for 12 AWG. So the load current is the same. And then for the step 4, so you have to calculate the percentage of voltage drop along each segment of the circuit. You have to consider starting from the source until the uh, until the load. Okay. So the transformer by using the approximation method, then you can get the percentage of voltage drop is 1.53%. Okay. And then you calculate the cable for 400 kc mil. Then you can get the percentage of voltage drop is 0.05%. Okay. You just insert all the value that you calculate before and also the current. And then you calculate uh, for the cable uh, 8 AWG, the percentage of voltage drop is 0.08%, while the transformer for TR2 is 1.47 percent okay and finally the percentage of drop for the cable for 12 awg is 0.24 percent and finally the last step is same as the single phase so you have to uh, you have to sum all the percentage of the drop along each seg segment starting at the source to the loop okay so you have the transformer 1.53, cable 0 .04, 0 0.05 for 400 kc mil, and then uh, for the 8 AWG 0 0.08, and then transformer 2 1.47, and the last one is cable 12 AWG is 0 0.24. So you sum all this um, voltage drop, then you can get the total voltage drop at the service panel for three phase system okay um, we continue our lecture
so before this we have uh, uh, we have learned about the um, analysis for voltage drop calculations so this uh, uh, topic we will understand uh, about the short circuit calculations so before uh, we go further we have to know first types of current in the power system so there are four types of current first one is the normal current overload current short circuit current and ground port current so for normal current uh, normal or load current may be defined as the current specifically designed to be drawn by a load under normal operation conditions okay so normal operation conditions it is the normal current okay um, so normal motor current varies okay it will varies from low values if under like uh, light loading to minimum values under medium loading until maximum values under maximum loading and this uh, normal current flows only in the normal circuit path okay uh, which has the generators, the sources, and also the impedance. Okay, so normal circuit path includes the phase and neutral conductors only. So it does not include equipment grounding conductors. The second one is the overload current or I O L. Okay, overload. So overload current is greater in magnitude uh, than full load current and flows only in a normal circuit path so uh, full load current is the normal current okay so i f l okay so it is commonly caused by overloaded uh, equipment single facing or low line voltage and thus is considered to be an abnormal current so some overload currents such as motor starting currents or we call log rotor current or I L R log rotor current are only temporary. Okay, so overload current is greater in magnitude than full load amperes, but less than log rotor amperes, which is I L R. Okay, current of the log rotor is greater than uh, overload current. Okay, and then the overload current is greater than the normal current, which is the full load. The, uh, the third one is the short circuit current. So short circuit current is greater than log rotor current and may reach upwards of thousands of amperes. So ISC, which is the current of the short circuit, is greater than the I log rotor. Okay. So short circuit is an abnormal a connection between two nodes of an electrical circuit that allows a current to travel along an unintended path with no or very low resistance. So as we know that V equals to IR, okay? So when R, the resistance is very low or uh, equivalent to zero, so what we have here is so V divided by 0, something that divided by 0 will equivalent to infinite. That's why the short circuit current is too high. Okay, the maximum value is limited by the maximum short circuit current available on the system at the fault point. Short circuit current may be further classified as bolted or arcing. Large amounts of short circuit current will flow into a bolted fault than the arcing fault. So by definition, a bolted fault has no fault impedance, while the arcing fault current has impedance associated with the arc. So be, because of that, the bolted fault has higher fault current magnitude than the arcing fault. Okay. And finally, is the ground fault current. So ground fault current consists of any current which flows outside, okay, outside the normal circuit path. So ground fault current flow in the equipment grounding conductor for low voltage system. So this happens, uh, this fault, ground fault current happens when the live or neutral current 
neutral uh, cable touch with the ground cable and this will cause the ground fault current. So in medium and high voltage system, ground fault current may return to the source through the earth. Ground fault current on low voltage systems may be classified as leakage, voltage or arc. Okay. Or arcing. Okay, uh, this is the sources of short circuit current. Okay, we have synchronous generators, synchronous motors, induction motors, and supply transformers. Okay, for synchronous generators, when a short circuit occurs downstream of a synchronous generator, it may continue to produce output voltage and current. So it means that, like this, um, generators are driven by turbine. Uh, water wheels, design, uh, uh, diesel engines, or other types of prime movers. Okay, so when a short circuit uh, occurs, happens on the system powered by this generator, the generator will continue to produce voltage at the generator terminals as the field excitation is maintained and the prime mover drives the generator at normal speed. The generated uh, voltage will cause a large magnitude fault current flow from the generator to the short circuit. Uh, and the flow of this uh, short circuit current or fault current is limited only by the generator impedance and the impedance of circuit between the generator and short circuit. Okay, so the second one is the synchronous motors. So, synchronous motors deliver short circuit current into the fault until the motor completely stops. So, uh, this synchronous motor uh, design is very similar to the generator design. Uh, but, uh, for synchronous motor, it has a magnetic field produced by direct current and also stator that carry the alternating current. So, when during normal operation, uh, these synchronous motors will consume AC power from the power line and it will convert the electrical energy into mechanical torque. So when a short circuit happens on the system feeding a synchronous motor, the voltage at the motor terminals will drop drastically. As a result, motor will stop delivering mechanical torque to the load and starts to decelerate. Okay. Still, the initial of the load and motor will drive the synchronous motor. The synchronous motor will turn to generate and deliver fault current for prolonged time after the initiation of a uh, short circuit. The fault current uh, will be limited, uh, same as the generators, uh, by the motor impedance and the impedance of the system from the short circuit to the motor terminals. Okay? And then for the induction motors, uh, it is the for synchronous motor and induction motors, short circuit current event is almost the same. Okay, and then uh, for the supply transformers, uh, transformers impedances will also limit the amount of short circuit current from the utility generators. Okay, and uh, means that okay the fault current delivered by a utility system depends uh, on the impedance of the generators and the and the impedance of power system to the terminals of the supply transformer supply transformer delivered fault current from the power system generators transformers change the system voltage and magnitude of the current okay so the fault current Delivered by this supply transformer, it depends on the transformer secondary voltage and impedance. The impedance of the upstream section of power system to the terminals of the transformer and the impedance of the circuit from the transformer to the short circuit. Okay. Okay, this is the current waveform of the short circuit current. The sources of the short circuit current, which is the synchronous generator, okay, synchronous generator, the synchronous motor, and also the induction motor. So for this uh, short circuit current has uh, symmetrical and asymmetrical fault currents. Okay, this one is the totally symmetrical uh, current, 
as a totally asymmetrical current and this one is partially asymmetrical current. Okay. Uh, symmetrical and asymmetrical are terms used to describe the symmetry of the short circuit uh, current waveform from the zero axis. Okay, if a short circuit occurs in an inductive reactive circuit at the peak of the voltage waveform, the resulting short circuit current will be totally symmetrical. So, in other words, the positive peak current has the same value as the negative peak current. That shows the symmetrical fault current. So if a short circuit in the same circuit occurs at the zero of the voltage waveform, the resulting short circuit current will be totally asymmetrical. So it means that the positive peak current, not same value, not has the same value with the negative peak current. And means that uh, there is a combination of the DC and AC components. Um, so, the symmetrical short circuit current consists only the pure AC component. Okay, So, if symmetrical, must consist of the pure AC component inside its sinusoidal waveform. It is applicable only for balanced three-phase power system and can be calculated as the total line to neutral voltage over the total impedances on the voltage on the power system. So, so uh, for that may affect all phases equally. Uh, the symmetrical uh, short circuit current okay, is the actual current that flows during a fault condition. So, this uh, asymmetrical current will con consist of the DC and AC components that contribute to a certain amount of a DC offset in the waveform immediately after the initiation of the fault. So as shows in this, as this uh, waveform. Okay, so we have um, the symmetrical part, the AC symmetrical part, and also the DC part, the DC offset part. So it will result in a total fault current, which is the asymmetrical short circuit current. So the amount of DC offset or asymmetry depends on the point where the fault occurs. Okay, the instantaneous peak uh, short circuit current is the maximum peak instantaneous fault current on the asymmetrical short circuit current waveform. So this is the instantaneous. Okay, this is the instantaneous peak short circuit current. Okay. So, it is a function of the x, the ratio of x over r of the system. Okay. So, this is the asymmetrical uh, short circuit current. Okay. This one, the wave here. And then, this is the symmetrical short circuit current, which is the positive and negative value is almost the same. So when you want to do the uh, analysis for this asymmetrical and asymmetrical fault currents, you have to uh, consider three things that are important. The first one is the RMS symmetrical fault current. Okay, so this one is the RMS symmetrical fault current here. And then the maximum peak is stated as value of the fault current. So this one is the, this one is the, uh, the maximum peak, eh? maximum peak of the instantaneous uh, fault current, and then the RMS value of the half cycle asymmetrical fault current. Okay, this one is the uh, the total RMS of the asymmetrical fault current. Uh, so this is the line to line uh, neutral equivalent circuit. So we have fault happens here. Okay. So you have to calculate what is the RMS symmetrical uh, fault current by using this equation R RMS equivalent to the V maximum divided by Z2 time with the impedance or you can use I RMS equivalent to the V phase okay, V phase V phase sorry the V phase divided by uh, Zs okay 
V phase or V line to neutral divided by the impedance. Okay. So theta, this one is from this equation. Okay, this one is from this equation. So theta is tangent minus uh, 1 x over r. And then uh, you have to calculate what is the zs. So normally uh, it will give zs equivalent to r plus jx. Okay, in conjugate, then you have to find the magnitude of the zs. So the it will be uh, equivalent to r squared plus x squared uh, square root. Okay. Okay. Uh, so uh, for this analysis, we have to identify the first half cycle as symmetrical for current. So we have to use this equation in order uh, to get the first half cycle as symmetrical for current. So equivalent to RMS half cycle factor times I RMS. So this half cycle factor can be taken from this equation. Okay. So we look at example 8. The source impedance at a 12.47 kV. So this one is a V line to line. Distribution substation bus is 0 0.4 plus J 1.5 ohm surface. This one is the impedance. So you have to calculate uh, A, the RMS for current, B, the maximum peak instantaneous value of for current, and C, the RMS value of the cycle, half cycle for current, if a balanced three phase fault occurs. Okay. So first of all, uh, you have to identify what is the line to neutral voltage, which is this is the V phase. Okay. So V phase equivalent to V line to line to divide by set three. Then you can get. 7.2 kilovolt. Then you use the equation I RMS equivalent to the V phase divided by the ZS. Okay, uh, so this ZS is given um, 0 0.4 plus with J1.5. Okay, so we have to find the magnitude of this impedance. So the equation will be 0 0.4 squared plus 1.5 squared to set 2. Okay, then you can get, we just uh, get this value and then at here, then you can get the IMS of the system is 4 uh, 4638. Ampere. So it's a large, eh, large uh, current, value of current. Okay, then uh, you have to identify what is the instantaneous peak factor in order to calculate the maximum peak instantaneous value of the fault current. So first you have to identify what is the X per R ratio. So this one is X divided by R. Then you can get the X per R ratio. So 3.75. So how you want to get the incidence speed factor is by using the table, the asymmetrical current factors table. Okay, so this is the uh, X per R ratio. So you have to um, focus on this part, this column, which is the instantaneous speed uh, factor. So before this, you calculate, you get X per R ratio is 3.75, right? So you have to find here, okay. So it is reached here 3 to 4, 3.75. So you have to look at this value. Okay. So for the interpolation, the equation will be y equivalent to y2 minus y1. Okay. Divided by x2 minus x1. Okay. Your times with x minus x1. Then you plus with y1. Okay. So y is the instantaneous peak factor. Uh, x is the system x per R ratio. Okay. So for 2 and y indicates. For 2, you have to refer to the table. For the, um, uh, for the lower system. For the lower value. And then 1 is the upper value. So we, okay, we look at the table. Eh? 3.75. So the instantaneous peak factor, 
So we got y2 is 2.0892 uh, and then y1 is 1.9495. Okay. And then uh, we know that um, from here, uh, and then we know that the system X are ratio, X2 is 4, okay, while X1 is 3. And after that, we just, in, uh, we just insert in this, uh, in this equation. So this one is Y2, this one is Y1, this one is uh, X2, okay, minus X1, this one is X minus Y1, okay, X1, sorry, X minus X1, and then plus with Y1, okay. From here, you can get the instantaneous big factor is 2.0543, okay. So, then you can calculate what is the uh, maximum peak instantaneous value of our current by using I peak equivalent to I uh, instantaneous peak factor U times with the I RMS. Okay. So the result will be very high which is 9528 amperes because this is the peak, the maximum peak of the fault current. And then you also have to identify the RMS half cycle multiplying factor in order to identify what is the RMS half cycle asymmetrical fault current is. So uh, same as the method uh, for the instantaneous current, you have to find the interpolation of, uh, from the table. So for this table, you have to refer to this column, okay? So this one, this one and this one, okay? So refer that this column. Then you just add in this equation. Okay, all is the same. Then you can get 1.172. So you have to uh, calculate uh, the equation is I RMS half cycle equivalent to I RMS. Okay, I RMS factor. You multiply with the I RMS. Then you can get the value is 5436 MPa. Okay, um, we also have to identify what the equivalent system impedance because we have, uh, for example, in the power system, we have the transformers, the cable. That's why we have to find what is the equivalent for that system impedance. Okay, to determine short circuit current, the total impedances of the system to the fault point must be established. Okay, same as the um, voltage drop uh, calculation. Okay, so common system impedances, we have the equivalent system, we have the transformer and also cable. So each of these components, we have to identify what is the value of the impedances. All impedances placed before transformer need to be reflected to its low voltage side. So we have to refer the reference is the low voltage side. So this one is it, uh, short circuit analysis in three phase systems. <laughs> okay, since the three phase fault condition results in a balanced set of a short circuit current, the RMS short circuit current at a particular fault, fault point is calculated as I RMS equivalent to V phase Okay, this one is V phase, V phase, divided by the magnitude of the total impedance. So this total impedance is very, very critical to be to be determined. Okay, um, <clears throat> so the X bar R ratio is used to determine the instantaneous peak factor and the half cycle factor as before, as I showed before, and half cycle factor is used to calculate the asymmetrical fault current. Okay, we look at example 9. Example 9, we have to determine the RMS symmetrical, the RMS asymmetrical and peak short circuit magnitudes for a three-phase fault occurring at A, F1 and B, F2 for the power system shown in figure below. So we have two fault 
occur in this the power system. So we have to identify all these components, all these types of short circuit uh, in this system. Okay, so this is the system. Okay, this one is the three phase system. Okay, so we have a uh, transformer, two transformer, transformer R1 and transformer R2. Okay, so from here we have to find what is the what is the RMS symmetrical, RMS symmetrical, and also pick short circuit magnitude. Okay, <clears throat> we have to do um, two analysis. First, we have to identify what is the total impedances to fault at F1. And the second one is we have to identify what is the total impedances to fault at F2. Okay, so we have two, two things that we have to consider so first is a we have to calculate the total impedance okay to fault to fault at f1 okay so f1 okay, okay. So what we have to determine is number one. Okay. Okay, number one is the Z equivalent system. Okay, the Z equivalent system. Number two, sorry, number two is the Z, the impedance of the transformer one. Okay, number three. Okay, this one the first one is the equivalent system the z uh, transformer one and also because of this is the part of f1 okay and then we have here is three 400 kc mil uh, copper per phase so number three is z of the cable for 400 kc mil okay so three things that we have to consider in order we want to calculate what is the z total okay and then this one is for f1 for f2 we also have to find what is the the total uh, impedance okay so the step is the first one you have to identify what is the Z equivalent system okay, up to F1? From F1 to the fault number two. This one is fault number two. From here, okay, you have to analysis until here. Okay, this one is for fault two. So you have to identify what is the Z equivalent up to F1. Sorry, up to F1. Here, uh, this way, okay. So, yeah, up to F1. So, before here, because we have analysis at the F1 part, so after that, we have to find what is the Z equivalent up to F1, and then number two is we have to identify. What is the impedance cable? Okay, this one for the uh, four four stroke zero EWG. Okay, and then after that, we have to determine what is the impedances for the transformer two. Okay, this one. Okay. And then, the final is we have to identify what is the impedance for the cable for 250 kc mil. This one. This we have to identify what is the equivalent system impedance. So, here we use S equivalent to IV. Okay, first step is we have to identify what is the equivalent system of the impedance okay so z equivalent of the system so how they get this equation is by using this formula 
So we have S equal to IV, V equals to IZ. Okay, there's number one, this one number two. So we just uh, put the number two equation to in one equation. So you get um, S equals to I squared uh, Z, and then Z equals to I squared over S. Okay. So this is the equation. Then I can get the impedance, the equivalent system of impedance is 0 0.1675 ohms. And you have to identify what is the impedance angle. So by using the formulation theta equivalent to tangent minus 1 x over r. Okay, so from the previous uh, slide, we know that the uh, this, the ratio of x over r is 3. So just put here 3, then you can get the angle, the impedance of the angle, which is 71.57 degree. Okay, from here, you have to identify what is the uh, resistance and also reactance of the system. Okay, so how to determine this um, resistance and impedance, uh, this reactance is by using the uh, this one triangle. So we have here is theta, z, r, and x. Okay, from here we can have the equation r equivalent to z cos theta, which reflect to the first equation, and x equivalent to z sin theta. And then the second equation. Then you can get the value of both resistance and reactance. The second one is you have to identify what is the impedance for the for the transform one. Okay, so this equivalent system impedance for the transform one is referred to the low voltage side of, of the trans, uh, TR1 transform one. Okay, so you just take um, you have to identify what is the resistance uh, referring to the uh, low side voltage and also the reactant. Okay. Then uh, you just use the, this one is the uh, R system that you can get from previous. And this one, and this one is the uh, reactance of the system. Okay, you use the information R equivalent to, this one is for the low side of the voltage. This one is the R system times with Vs over Vt squared. So Vs is the secondary of the voltage and V primary, this one is the V primary. Okay, you just add here, then you can get the resistance of the system uh, referring to the low side of the voltage. Okay, same goes to the reactance. Uh, after that, um, you also have to identify what is the percentage of the resistance and the percentage of the reactant of the transformer one. Okay, because it given in the uh, in the question is the percentage of the impedance. So you have to identify what is the value for the percentage of R and also percentage of X for the transformer one. So first step is you have to identify what is the data. Okay, theta, as I mentioned before, the, the equation is tangent minus 1 x over r. Okay, you can get 78.69 degree. From there, you can use the, the this equation to get the percentage of the r. Okay, this one is the, this one is the percentage of the uh, impedance. Okay, uh, times is the cos theta. And then, the second one is, this also is the Z, Z percentage of Z, sine theta, you can get the value for the percentage of the reactant of the transformer 1. Okay, and then um, you have to find the magnitude, uh, the value of the resistance of uh, transformer 1 and also the reactance of transformer 1. So by using the previous previous equation that I have mentioned before, okay, we know here, then you can get um, then you can get the value for the resistance and also the reactance, okay. And then um, because of this, uh, uh, okay. 
So you, you can get the resistance and impedance for the transformer. You settle that for the second step. And then the third step is you have to find the Z, the impedance for the 400 kc mil. Okay, this one is for the cable. Okay, so for the cable, uh, of course, you have to refer to the six, uh, 600 volt um, table. Okay, and then you can get the resistance and also the reactance value. Okay, this one uh, have to divide by three because if you referring to the questions, here is three, eh? three copper per phase means that we have three three conductors that's why we have to divide by three okay then um, you look at the table okay um, table from four uh, from 400 kc mil you can get 0 0.035 times with the feet and then you can get the value for the resistance same goes to the impedance okay and the final is you can calculate what is the total impedance to fault at four, uh, F1. First is the equivalent system. Okay, this one is the uh, impedance for the equivalent system. And then the second one, you calculate the impedance of the transformer. And final is you calculate for the uh, impedance for the cable 400 kc mean. So the total, you just add all these um, total impedance. And then you can get the total impedance to fault at uh, F1. Okay. After that, you have to uh, determine what is the magnitude of this uh, resistance by using uh, R squared plus X squared. That's so two. Okay. And then you can get this value. Okay, after that, you just get the x per r, uh, the ratio of x per r. So, x per r is just this one. Uh, x, this one is r, this one is x. So, x over r, then you can get this equation, this value. Okay? Okay, after that, uh, now you have to identify what is the RMS symmetrical short circuit current at F1. Uh, so, uh, you have to find what is the IRMS. Uh, this one is the B phase. Okay, B phase at the, sorry, this one is B phase at the low voltage, low side voltage. Low side voltage. Okay, you have B line to line over set 3. Okay, so you got 1100 over set 3, then you get 635.09. And then you divide by the, uh, uh, the, the total, the magnitude of the, this one is the magnitude of Z. S, okay, the total, okay. Then you can get the IRMS is. 5660 m very very high okay and what is uh, the rms symmetrical short circuit current and then you also have to find the uh, the peak instantaneous current uh, same like before so first you have to find the instantaneous peak factor by using the interpolation method you have to refer to the to the table that i have given before okay and then uh, you can get so uh, because of uh, the result uh, is 4.42 for x over r then you have to find the range is around 4 to 5 okay for the for the instantaneous peak factor okay then you can get the factor here then you use the formulation i peak equals to the factor i Factor times with the RMS. I R M S. Then you can get the current, which is 12,070 amps. Very, very high. Okay. Then uh, you also have to identify the house cycle factor in order to.
calculate the half cycle uh, Remains asymmetrical current uh, same like the previous uh, previous method so you use the table asymmetrical table uh, then you can get the value which is 1.2212 and then you just uh, add in this equation then you can get the half cycle RMS asymmetrical current is 6912 MPS okay after that we continue to find the equivalent uh, the analysis for uh, for two okay first we have to find the equivalent uh, impedance for for two so z equivalent which is for f2 okay um the first we calculate for the cable, the resistance and the reactance uh, for the 4 stroke 0 AWG cable. So, as I have mentioned before, you have to refer to the 600 volt table. Then you can get uh, this one is from the 600 volt tables. Okay. Then uh, you can get the resistance and also the reactance value. Okay, times with the feet, the length of the cable, which is 10 feet. Then you can get the resistance for the cable is 0 0.00063 ohms, while the impedance is 0 0.00051 ohms. Okay, and then uh, you have to find the resistance and also the reactance. Referring to the low voltage side of the transformer too. <clears throat> okay. Then you just uh, use the previous equation R, RC equivalents to uh, R of the system from the cable. You times with the uh, the secondary voltage. Okay, this one is the secondary voltage over V primary squared. Then you can get the resistance value. And same goes to the reactance value. Okay, after that, you have to identify what is the theta of the impedance, which is the tangent minus 1 x over r. So, uh, the ratio is 1.5. Then you can get 56.31 degree. Okay. Then, uh, from the questions, we, we know that the it given that the uh, impedance of the transformer is 1.8%. Then we have to find out what is the resistance, the percentage of resistance and also the reactance of the transformer too. By using these two equations, then you can get the value for the resistance and also the reactance percentage. Okay. And then uh, it is repeat. You just repeat the same uh, uh the same step then you find the resistance the value of the resistance for transformer 2 by using this equation okay then you can get 0 0.02296 ohm and also the uh, impedance of the transformer 2 you can get 0 0.03445 ohms okay uh, that one is for the fourth uh, stroke zero AWG cable then you also have to find the impedance for the 250 kcm cable okay just repeat uh, the uh, steps before so you have to find the RC the resistance the reactance this one you can get the equation the value from the tables the 600 volt tables okay and then um, you have to find the resistance and reactance up to point F1 reflected to the low voltage side of the TR2. Okay. So you just uh, key in this is the, uh, the resistance. Okay. The resistance from the uh, system from the, T, from the uh, TR1. Okay, from the point of F1. Okay, then you times with the secondary voltage divided by the uh, primary voltage. 
okay after that uh, you will get the uh, the value for the resistance system for the transformer too okay after that you have to find uh, what is the uh, reactance of the system uh, referring to the low voltage side of TR2 okay from here you can get the value of the reactance is 0 0.01558 ohm okay next is after you get all the uh, the value of the system impedance of each of the component then you can uh, add all these uh, impedances to get the total impedance to F2 okay the first one is the impedance of the equivalent up to F1 and then the cable um, number 4 stroke 0 EWG and then the impedance for the transformer 2 and finally the impedance for the cable 250 kcm then we just sum up we get 0 0.02712 plus J0.0562 okay so this one is the resistant and this one is the rectant so you get the uh, the magnitude for the resistance uh, you can get this one and also you can get the ratio x over r is 1.87 after that you can calculate what is the rms symmetrical short circuit current at f2 so i rms equal equivalent to 239.6 volt so this one is 415 you divide by set 3 because this one is vll okay you have to use the v phase value okay so you divide by the z 0 0.05743 then you can get the symmetrical uh, short circuit current the rms is 4172 m then you have to get you to you you need to calculate the peak instantaneous current so first you have to identify what is the instantaneous peak factor by using the interpolation method plus with the asymmetrical current uh, table then you can get uh you get the instantaneous peak factor so you just times with the i rms okay then you can get the peak instantaneous current and then for the half cycle factor also same uh, just you refer the same tables but the column at the half uh, half cycle factor then with the interpolation methods you can get the value for the uh, half cycle factor then uh, same uh, procedure you just times with the rms uh, current then you can get the current the half cycle rms asymmetric current is 4326 okay now we continue with the short circuit analysis in single phase systems Okay, so in single phase system, the only possible fault is line to ground fault across 240 volt. So the short circuit current is calculated as I RMS equivalent to line to neutral voltage, which is the uh, V phase, divided by the magnitude of the impedance, total impedance. Okay, so the V phase must be 240 volt for single phase. So we look at the example 10, determine the RMS symmetrical, RMS asymmetrical and pitch shock uh, circuit current magnitudes for a single phase line to ground fault occurring at point F1 for the power system shown below. Okay, so we have the first is the three phase system. Okay, and then we also have the single phase, uh, single phase system. Okay. Okay, so you have to uh, analysis from this uh, diagram and then you have to find um, the total impedance to fault 1. So this one is the fault 1 happens here. Okay, so first what you should do is, so we have to find the Z uh, total okay, the impedance 
total impedance to F1. So, you have to look at from here until the default. Okay. So, first, you have to identify what is the Z equivalent system. Okay. Number two, you have to identify what is the uh, the impedance of the transformer. Okay, for the transformer. And then you also have to identify what is the impedance for the cable. Okay, impedance of the cable four over zero. And then you have to identify what is the impedance of the cable for the 12 AWG. So you have to look at uh, the system first, then you can um, you can identify what you have to identify first in order to calculate all the uh, short circuit current value. Okay, first is you have to find what is the equivalent system Z equivalent system okay so first you have to uh, calculate the V system for a single phase so 6600 volt divided by set 3 okay because this one we have to consider V phase and divided by 2000 amps you got 1.9053 ohms then you get you calculate the uh, the angle of the impedance which is tangent minus 1 this one is the r x per r ratio you got 67.4 percent uh, 4 degree okay from there you uh, because of this is the uh, the impedance so you have to identify what is the resistance and also the reactant system of the single phase so you just use the previous formula then you can get both value for the resistant and reactant. Okay. Um, reflecting system R and X to the 240 volt. Okay. Then you have to find the R prime system single phase equivalent to 0 0.7322. Okay. Times with the 240 volt divide by uh, the uh, the primary voltage so this one is the secondary voltage this one is the primary voltage and then uh, which is reflecting at the 240 okay so you got 0 0.002905 ohms okay while well, for the impedance you just uh, the same uh, formula you just substitute the value of the resistance to the reactance and then you can get the value for the reactance uh, of the prime system for single phase. After that, you have to find the uh, the evidence for the transformer. Okay, for the transformer, and this transformer R and X have to be referred to the low voltage side, which is the 450 volt. Okay, so RTR is uh, one over hundred times with the the percentage of R for times 415 volt divided by the S, which is 50 kVA. So you get 0 0.06544 ohms for the resistance and reactance, you got 0 0.07578 ohms. Okay? And then uh, transformer X and R and X for the half winding or single phase condition. So this one is uh, for the three phase condition, okay, this one is for the three phase condition. So you have to do in the single phase condition, so you have to divide by three, okay, times with the resistance of the transformer for the three phase. You can get 0 0.02181, while the reactant is 0 0.02526. Okay, this one is for the single phase condition. And then after that, uh, you also have to find the resist the re, uh, the impedance, the resistor which is the resistor and also the reactant of the uh, four zero uh, AWG uh, cable. Okay, so because of this is the single phase, as I mentioned at the previous lecture, you have to 
add the values of 2 okay, in the equation. Then uh, this also, the 0 0.1 and 0 0.051, you can get from the 600 wood tables. Times with the length of the cable, then you can get the resistance and also the reactance of the cable. After that, you have also to identify what is the resistance and reactance of the cable for 12 AWG copper cable. And also, see this one you can get from the table, 600 volt table, times to the 50 feet. Then you can get the resistance of the reactance for the table. After that, you have to summarize to, uh, for the total impedance to port F1. So the impedance of the equivalent system is 0 0.002905 plus Z0.0098. Six nine seven eight, and then this is the uh, the impedances for the transformer. This one is the value for the resist the impedance for the cable for so zero, and then this one is the impedances for the cable twelve. Then you can get you just sum up this all uh, impedances, then you can get the total impedances for the for the system two for one. Then you have to get the magnitude of the impedance, which is 0 0.2493 ohms, and then you can get the uh, expert R ratio. From there, you can identify what is the RMS symmetrical short circuit current. So RMS equivalent to 240, you divide by uh, the value of uh, the Z total. Okay, so this one is B. This one is Z total. Then you can get the IRMS is 962.7 amps. Okay. After that, you identify what is the instantaneous peak factor. Okay. This one is, uh, you can get 1.4142. Uh, and the half cycle RMS factor is 1. Okay. Then you just add in the, um, the equation. So, you times with the uh, IRMS, you can get 1361.5 amp. And the RMS first cycle, half cycle asymmetrical current, uh, also you can get 962.7 amps. So, uh, that's all uh, for chapter 3, which is the uh, analysis for the voltage draw and uh, short circuit current. Uh, so we we'll continue uh, for chapter 4. Thank you. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh.